Look at this thing. This is what happens when you feed a night runner after midnight. <laughs> this, is a, this is a night runner on steroids. That looks incredibly awesome. Somehow that lines up perfectly with the Red Cat Gen 8 Axe chassis. It looks like one mean Tacoma. That's giving me some ideas here. I might have to order up a spare body for this X edition. All right, we are back at the beginning of a new build. Well, I say the beginning. I've already kind of jumped ahead, as you can see, and I've done a little work here. I've addressed the body posts, and I've glued in some ring magnets, so the posts basically don't pop up at all. And then I kind of address the black holes with a little paintwork on the hood, and then I painted in the roof rails as well. And then you can see I painted in kind of a bed liner. I brought that up over the lip of the uh, bed. I've gone ahead and installed the bed rails <clears throat> in preparation for the rooftop tent I've got here. Um, so that's kind of uh, brings you up to speed. I got the snorkel on there as well. So let's talk about some of these stage one parts here. So from SSD, I ordered up some brass. So I've got some nice front brass knuckles. I've got a brass rear diff and uh, link mounts. And that'll go in the rear to add a little bit of weight. And then from Bauhaus, I've got their low CG tray that came with battery straps. And then to address this IFS front steering, I've got the Bauhaus steering rack kit and the aluminum uh, bell cranks. So that is supposed to be a really good fix for this steering. Um, I think I may have a servo picked out uh, and that may get here for this session. Uh, these stainless skids here are just beautiful. Uh, these come all the way from Poland. These are from Artful Dodgers. So I've got my uh, lower IFS front arm skids. And then this is the full length set for the belly and then it's got a rear diff skid you can see under there as well. So this stuff is really, really useful parts. So I'm pumped to put that on and try those out. And then you can see here from Element, I ordered a little bumper set for 10 bucks. My front bumper is sitting crooked. <laughs> and I've, uh, you know, I checked the body, checked the frame, checked everything. But you can see there are the gaps. Um, it should be a little bit of a gap there because of the magnets. But it shouldn't be sitting crooked. So for $10, I figured I would try this uh, brand new bumper, see if that's straight and that'll fix it so that right there is going to bring me to stage one basically a little weight and addressing some steering all right well you know i had to do it I had to get the benchmark way in here on the uh, sky rc four corner system so starting out we are at a good bias here of course this is no battery and no tent mounted in the rear so we have a 5644 front bias um, 2,336 grams. Uh, let's flip over two ounces. So we are 82.4 ounces. So that is our benchmark. So that front weight is definitely going to help. Uh, the battery, I think, is going to help add that front weight as well. Um, that rooftop tent is easily removable, so if that ends up being detrimental in situations, it can be pulled off. But anyways, it's good to know this is the starting point, basically. Uh, the ring magnets have been added, the snorkel and the bed rails have been added, but other than that, it is bone stock. Quick little update here, I'm getting the uh, SSD brass here on the rear. You can see I've got the shock mount. and. 
link mounts in and uh, just wanted to show you inside the diff which was super easy I just took off the drive shaft pin and disconnected the upper links then it can rotate down and you can unscrew the four bolts and then you can pull off the diff cover and uh, you can see it's got some grease in there I'm going to clean that out and put some different grease in there kind of seal the diff edges a little bit better with some utter butter um, and then put in my nice brass uh, this gray finish I really like this SSD being gray I think that'll go really nice with the Night Runner paint job but uh, anyways All right, so there's the finished product installed. That nice gunmetal brass from SSD. So that'll give me a little bit of weight, uh, a little unsprung weight low on the axle. Since these wheels are plastic and that's really the only weight down low I've got on the rear. Um, so now we are moving on to the front. The SSD brass knuckles and the steering rack and the bell cranks and that should get us all set up as far as uh, the first phase of suspension here just wanted to do a quick video here on showing why i'm replacing that uh, steering rack and those bell cranks there's just an incredible amount of slop in this steering um, I had to double check that my wheels were not loose but I mean it's just I guess that's just an issue but um, this Bauhaus kit will address that um, so let's dig into this all right back a little update here making some progress on these knuckles I just wanted to show you kind of the difference here so the lower is the stock assembly uh, the knuckle, the two bearings, and then the steering plate. So this is the SSD brass knuckle. So it comes with its own bearing because it's actually larger. This outer bearing is larger. So we'll use this one. We're going to reuse that. Uh, we won't use this. Of course, we're not using the knuckle. We're going to reuse the steering plate. Uh, we don't need the screws because it's got its own hardware and then because this is set up to work with all I guess enduro chassis that means it'll work with the solid axle which this is not obviously so it comes with its own hardware and kingpin bushings that we are not going to need because we have these ball studs on the IFS system and they've basically got that kingpin bushing as part of them and this just slides right over so we'll use that uh, lock nut that it came with and so that's basically what's going back on each side and then you know just heads up you're going to need a little open-ended wrench to back up all of these hard to reach uh, lock nuts so I did not have one had to order one you know from Amazon took a day but it might set you back so just FYI um, so I'm gonna get this guy put on each side and then I will attack that whole uh, steering rack got a little update here got the whole rack pulled off the front end assembly super easy um, comes right off you just pull off that skid plate for bolts and then you can access everything else so this is the stock steering rack assembly so we'll be reusing looks like the hardware and the bearings and then you can see this new rack here is a lot larger it's going to mount vertically um, we're going to pull out these inserts and put these inserts in and then i'm assuming these are going to go in one end of this new assembly 
and then it comes with additional bump stops that we're going to sit on the knuckle that's going to keep the steering uh, from going too far with this IFS system. So that's the setup that's going in, so I'm going to go ahead and get that put in. There's the reference if anybody wants to know. But so far, pretty easy and smooth. Okay, I got this rack uh, assembled. Got the uh, bell cranks on there. So this will install this way. Um, so basically the flat rod end gets the new kind of ball joint and it uses the screw that comes with the kit. Then on the bent joint, you take out the ball and you flip it because now you're going to mount this from the bottom into the knuckle. The reason is these bump stops uh, have the little recess there that hold the nut in place. So originally these mounted from the top down. So that's why you've got to flip these because you're going to be coming up from the bottom. And then one other thing with these brass knuckles, you've got to shave off a little kind of a wedge there, kind of an angle uh, to allow for this knuckle edge, that inner edge right there. And these are really nice, they're slotted, so these actually slide right over and line right up. And then what you want is this bump stop is going to hit the gray piece. It's going to hit that rod end. It's not going to hit the big black uh, collar from the upper A-arm. So that's just perfect right there. So anyways, I'm going to get this uh, bolted back up and then we'll move on I guess to the battery tray and then the skids. Alright, got this thing installed. You can see the rack under there. And this is what you're left over with. Alright, I'm about to get started on this battery tray. So this is the stock tray. Kind of where it rides on the frame. So I'm going to have to take off the zip ties and reroute that servo wire off of the frame since the battery will actually sit across the frame. Here's the new tray. Uh, this is the bottom. It's got a little slot for the strap and then it will, it will sit like this even with the top of the frame so the battery can just you know, be as long as it needs to be or short and just slide across the frame. So, looks like I'm going to have to loosen a lot of screws uh, along the frame on each side to spread this. So, I'm glad I've got this little power tool to do that. That makes that much easier. So, I'm going to get going on this. Alright, you're looking at the finished product. You can't even see it. There it is. So, that went in uh, really easily. Um, just took out on this side two, three, four, of course all four of these, on, you know, two on each side, and then three bolts, the first three here, took those out. So I could just spread this one frame rail out and pop the tray out, slip this one in. Um, I did pull the receiver box open and reroute the servo wire through the little battery strap folder underneath. And then I've got just one of these non-slick Bauhaus Helios straps. Um, and here's the, the big bulk that came out of it. So just massive as compared to what's staying in there. And then here's my little uh, shorty pack that I'll be running in there. So I just test fit that and it looks nice. Um, this is really neat. I'm, it's a new battery for me, this Pitbull. Um, it's got a little meter on the side, tells you how full it is, and of course I haven't charged this one, it's brand new, uh, but that's that's pretty cool. Uh, I got this from A-Main. So anyways, that's the setup, now on to something fun, um, we're going to look at the skids. And look at that detail, these have little boxes engraved on them. 
I guess that's the Artful Dodgers uh, logo. I think that's a fox. I don't know for sure. A little something. Um, hardware, uh, mounting brackets for this main piece. Um, and then this was a separate package for the IFS skids. So those are self-explanatory, but the, the big skid package comes with actual instructions, which is um, just incredibly awesome. So really, really nice attention to detail here. So I don't think there'll be any problem getting this stuff installed. So give me just a second. Quick look here. Uh, first little issue is the, they ask you to reuse your stock hardware for this mounting block here. And of course you can see it's recessed, but there's still some thickness of this mounting block. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually get uh, some M3 uh, 20 millimeter screws. I've got a you know a, a box here of different sizes. So it looks like the stock is an 18 millimeter. So I'm going to use 20s, and that ought to get me uh, all the bite that it originally had. So um, and then this is the retainer plate you add since you're pulling off the stock plastic skid here um, and then I believe the rest is just uh, it's adding this hardware I think you're attaching here and you're attaching here uh, and I believe they give you a little washer shum it's gonna ride right there so I'm gonna move right ahead and see I get this on well I thought the screw links was an issue but the real issue is you can't mount the DeMillo bumper after the fact because of this big long skid that hangs below. You don't have any access uh, to these front screws. So if you mount the skid plate from below through the bumper mount and then you screw on the skid plate from the front, then you can't remove these two screws because you've covered them with the skid plates. You can't mount the bumper. And if you put the bumper on first and you screw up through the mount, then you can't access these two front screws to actually screw on the skid plate. So the solution that I found was to use two screws and flip the mounts. So I took this OEM mount and flipped it upside down, this bumper mount because the threads are only on the top typically. So now the threaded portion's on the bottom. So I also flipped their mount, this black piece upside down. So I've got short screws going up into the threaded portion of the OEM mount and they almost take up the whole portion of that, but they leave just a little bit. And then I've got these other screws that I'll go from the top to mount the bumper and they'll have just a little bit of bite into that threaded portion which is fine because they're really just acting as a pin so the bumper doesn't pull out it's really these that need a sufficient bite uh, for this mount brace there's a little bit better shot here so you can see there there's a gap there between the OEM mount and their mount because it's flipped um, and if you look you know typically they've got kind of little quarter circles kind of cut out that would fit that if it was put on there properly but since everything's flipped upside down um, that's just how it is um, and I didn't have screws uh, short enough so I'm using some little two millimeter uh, spacers to space those out just a little bit. Um, so they thread in just enough from the top and the bottom and they meet uh, and they just, you know, butt ends there in that threaded portion. So that looks to uh, be the solution here. So I'm gonna move forward and get this stuff on. All right, it's mounted up pretty sweet. You know, with once this is, uh, accounted for here in the front with the buffer mount and everything flipped everything bolted right up uh, smoothly 
So that's nice. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap there between the OEM bumper mount and the skid plate that wouldn't be there if everything wasn't flipped over. But I don't really see that as an issue. And that's covered anyways. I think the main bonus here, as you can see, is the ability to actually mount the bumper. So now I can put screws in and pin this from the top and remove it easily without digging off the skid plate every time. But you can see there's no way to screw this from the bottom. And then of course if you have your bumper on, you know, there's no way to have enough clearance even even with an Allen key to get to that mount. So this looks like this is going to be the solution unless they come out with a new bumper mount. Now oh, what's happened here? Looks like we're going backwards. So I was still having a little bit of uh, wheel play and so I went onto Bauhaus's site and lo and behold they've got text instructions. So one of the things they mention is there is a little looseness between the through bolts and these little kind of kingpin bushings in the steering rack. And so they say, you know, put some glue or E6000 or like a bunch of thread lock there um, to help that. But I just, I got some shrink, shrink tube, it's being focused there. So I put a little shrink tube, basically the uh, link of the bushing there to take up some of that slack. So hopefully that'll get rid of that little bit of play that was left. And then uh, <clears throat> I also needed to adjust these out. Um, and it does say leave one or two millimeters, you know, and then you can adjust your toe in, toe out from there. So I had some pretty good toe in, so that hopefully will get me out straight. I'll just have to see. And then also the instruction said um, these little ball sockets that you put the flange end towards the rack and I had them opposite so I just flipped those um, but really super easy to pull that skid off I mean this took like you know five minutes to pull it off switch it around and put it back on so then I'll throw that rear diff on and this should be the end of the skids okay got the rear diff skid on and I'll tell you what it was a tight fit had to take off the uh, axle just to make sure I could get it fitted properly but just kind of had to you know stretch that stainless around there and make sure it's flat and get all four kind of started and uh, it'll it'll fit but it's precision it is tight it definitely uh, definitely didn't just flop right on there um, you know you had to kind of work it from the sides and work it down so anyways that ought to provide nice protection uh, to the rear. And of course, I've got the uh, LCA skids on as well. So that pretty much wraps up the skids. So I think I'm going to lower the body posts one more, uh, get the body on, bumpers, rails, and that may call it phase one. All right, here we are. The post stage one build way in. So this is no battery. Let's just see where we ended up here. Look at that. It's nice and even. 2,600 grams. And we've got a better uh, front bias than we started with. We've got a 5842. So let's drop the rooftop tent on there. Or the bed rack tent. Well, that thing's heavy. That, that dropped us some points there. Okay, so the next phase, I guess, will be to actually put the battery in. All right, so I've got the battery in and the tent and rack off. So we were almost at a 60-40. So 2,819 grams with the battery. I'm gonna flip over. So we are 99.5 ounces. I'll flip it 
back. And let's put the tent on there for kind of the final weight. All right, so now we're about back to the starting ratio, 56-44. Um, I, I want to say we were somewhere near that. I'll put it on the screen. So 2,978 grams with everything. That puts us at 105.1 ounces. So there we are, that's stage one for you. All right, just wanted to do a real quick follow-up. Some final thoughts here. I've got the uh, body post lowered down one more hole. So I lowered them down two holes total to make up for the two magnets. So basically they sit on the bumpers, front and rear, sit right in the sliders. Um, just looks perfect. Looks like a factory fit there. Just awesome. Very happy with this first stage. I had some graphics planned, but they have not shown up. So I'm just going to kind of hold all of that for another build. But let me know what you think in the comments. I'm pretty happy with this, at least initial graphic design. Um, I think it came out really well and I like the blacked out bed. I think that looks super good. It just magically lined up with the bed rails somehow. And I purposely wanted to leave the edge Lexan because that's going to take the hits. So if that's painted, that'll just get scratched off. But super, super nice. That bumper <laughs> looks like it's part of the body, just super tight. The bumper actually, I think, helps support the back of the bed since the posts are so far forward. This is just kind of wagging, so that's actually a good thing. So anyways, I think that will do it for this first phase here. And uh, now I'm going to get out and actually run this thing, see how it performs.